Okay, YouTube, welcome back to Dwarf Fortress 2014 with the Flying Fent, and it's time for a brand new series. I don't even know what the fort's going to be called yet because I haven't started, uh, but let's do uh, a little bit of some some preamble, some filling in on the details. I went ahead, I downloaded the latest version of Dwarf Fortress that's available, which if we take a look, you can see is 0.40.24. Uh, that was the latest version that came with a... Uh, a starter pack, the Paradexus Errant starter pack. I have no idea if there's a newer version without it. I only look at the Paradexus Errant starter pack, but there you go. That's the one that I have. I made a few changes. I've set a pop cap to 150 for very good reason. Let me show you my plan. Huzzah. These are specific roles that I'm going to need. So I'm going to have six miners. I'm going to have one woodcutter and so on and so forth. You can see the whole list here. I planned it all out. How many of all how much I need. Three doctors. Uh, you can see I have some nobles in here. And I didn't go in detail in nobles. There's obviously more nobles. But these are the nobles that are going to have no other job except for this one. Uh, and then outlined our soldiers. Uh, and then we have our totals down here. Uh, so there's 58 people that aren't soldiers or haulers. Now you'll notice all these extra things. These are all things that haulers are going to do. Uh, so it's 58 not counting haulers, 35 haulers, 57 soldiers brings us to a grand total of 150 dwarves. So I set up a population cap of 150, child cap of 25 for a maximum of 25% of the 20% of the fort, sorry, which will give us a strict population cap of 175. I turned off weather because the only advantage weather is going to do would be to refill puddles, and I'm not worried about it because I'm going to embark somewhere that has a river. Uh, entomb pets I don't care about, but artifacts, temperature, invaders, and cavens are all set for yes. The grazing coefficient is set for 100%, so no change there. And my starting labors, uh, I set to no. You know, I like to set those manually. Aquifers are set for no as well. I have, uh, I believe I started with the advanced profiles, but I have my own custom embark profile I'm going to use, so it doesn't really matter in there. I'm also using the classic Lazy New Pack key bindings. Now, something that I've, I've gotten some questions on, uh, and that I've seen other people commenting on. They have a hard time, if they're new to the game, they watch one of these videos and people say, oh yeah, it's plus and minus to move in the secondary menu and that doesn't work. The problem is if you look at your keyboard right beside backspace, which is the plus and minus keys most people end up using, the minus key is on the left. It's, it's a minus key and if you hold shift, it's an underscore. But the plus key right beside it is actually an equals key. It's only plus if you use shift. So the default minus is just minus. And the default plus is actually shift equals, which I don't like. I don't like that I got to do that twice. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to go to key bindings. I'm going to go to general. I'm going to come all the way down here to secondary selector down. I'm going to remove this one, uh, which would be done with the backspace keys, how you remove. So I'm going to remove it. We're going to add a binding. I'm going to make it equals as opposed to plus. There, that's done. And then for secondary selector down, uh, it's, and secondary uh, page, yeah. Uh, I want these to be underscore. So I'm going to delete that. Add a binding of underscore for page up selector. And for the page down selector, I'm going to set a key binding of now I'm going to use shift equals, which is the plus key. Now I realize before anyone comments and I said the key bindings may seem a little silly. I realized they were built to be used using the number pad, but I don't use the number pad for, for this game. So that's why for me, I like to remove those. In any case, those are my key bindings configured. I'm going to save and exit my key binding changes. There we go. I will return to the title screen. Okay, now we've gone ahead and set up our key bindings. What other things, what other settings in Lazy New Pack do we have? Well, we're using Phoebus again. Uh, liquid depth displayed, varied ground, yes. I'm using the default color scheme as well. No customization anywhere. Uh, utilities I'm going to be using, Dwarf Therapist again, as well as Sound Sense. Under Advanced Sound is no, because I've got Sound Sense going. The FPS counter we will show. The uh, calculation is at 100. The graphical, again, I turned down to 30 because I don't need any extra and I'm recording at 30 frames per second. No intro movie, but windowed. You can see I do run it in windowed mode. I just happen to maximize it, take up the full screen. It's easier for me rather than full screen mode since I do switch around utilities a lot. Plus for my recording software, it works better if I just record the whole screen, which doesn't work if it's not set for Windows mode. Uh, saves, seasonal, initial save, pause on save, pause on load, backup save and compress, all turned on. And under DFAC, workflow, uh, performance, pure bug, pure bug fixes are all turned yes. Uh, other automation is no. 
Uh, stone sense is no partial mouse control is no and automatic job assignment is also no i know there are some people who like they you know they like watching lex plays without all the micromanagement so they like to see the automatic job assignments turned off frankly as far as i'm concerned door fortress is a game of micromanagement at least the way that i like to play it, which isn't to criticize anyone who may enjoy it differently but for me it's a micromanagement game so to take away part of the micromanagement takes away part of the enjoyment for me but that's how my lazy new pack is set up i went ahead i installed it uh i set up sorry my starter pack not lazy new pack uh i started i created a bunch of new worlds i went through uh a lot and i found two worlds that had what seemed to me to be suitable embarks for what i was looking at doing uh so that's not ideal and and frankly they weren't they weren't even ideal embarks either. Uh, all I did, if you're curious, under create new world, I left all the settings on default with the exception of history I set to short and mineral occurrence I set to frequent. Uh, but there will be, just like for the last series in the first episode, so at the bottom of this episode, if you look in the description, you'll find a link to the uh, the files, uh, the exported uh, files if you'd like to see them and see exactly what the world uh, looks like. All of the kind of legends exports are available, uh, are going to be available at the bottom. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and start playing. You can see I had two regions with suitable embarks. And as I said, I do like to have backup. So there's my backup for region one and region two. Uh, we're going to just start right on region one. Region two had two suitable embark locations. Region one only had one. I've gone ahead and looked at this embark location. It looked pretty good to me. So I'm going to stick with it. I've also gone ahead and set up an Embark profile to use uh, so we don't have to go ahead and, you know, add a whole bunch of, of nonsense. Okay, so here's the world, uh, the Domain of Souls. And we are going to be embarking down here on the Land of Ink in the Fleshy Plains, which sounds ominous, but whatever. Um, and uh, so we're embarking into some shrubland, warm temperature, woodland uh, trees, moderate other vegetation with calm surroundings. I wouldn't have minded finding, you know, a little bit more vegetation or even some a little bit more dangerous terrain. But this was kind of the best embark that I could find. And I got tired of regenerating worlds. So this is where I'm going with. There is a brook that runs through it as well. The brook is the, I believe that is combat smashed. The afflicted is the name of the brook. There has some, there's some sand, some very deep soil, some shallow metals, some deep metals, and some flux stone. If we take a look at exactly what it has, we can prospect all. And you can see uh, interesting things that I'll point out will be lignite. Always interested to see lignite. Uh, and then for metals, we have a lot of gold, some tetrahedrite, some magnetite, and some hematite, as well as a little bit of cassiterite. So we should be in pretty good shape there. Uh, if we take a look at neighbors, you can see there are dwarves, goblins, human, and elves. So we neighbor everybody. The goblins are at war with us. Uh, for civilization, I'm going to go with the the wet floor because it sounds hilarious. And they're kind of right next to us on the map, right right down here. Uh, oh, are we on an island? We do seem to be on an island. Well, it's a large continent. Uh, and we did have enough neighbors, so that's fine. Uh, and you can see it is completely flat terrain for whatever that's worth. That was just by pure accident, not necessarily something that I chose. Uh, so there we go. We're all set. Let's embark. My uh, embark profile that I configured is right here. As you can see, there was no notification that we were missing anything. So let's take a look at what we have. Uh, two female dogs, two male dogs, one of each gender of cat, three ewes, one ram, eight blue peahens and one blue peacock. All that should be familiar to people. That's my standard kind of embark animals. Uh, as far as goods we're bringing, three copper picks, uh, two water skins and two backpacks. They happen to be made out of gray, gray lang or leather. I'm bringing five lye as well as five gypsum plaster. Bring a couple of ropes and then 21 each of the dwarven wine, ale, beer, and rum. 16 of the four underground crop seeds that grow into uh, brewable plants. So the plump helmets, the pigtails, the cave wheat, and the sweet pods. Uh, also, oh, I want to take multiples of these. Let me, uh, how much, I forgot to do this part. They cost two each. I want to take five each, so I need 10. I've already got, am I thinking that right? It's 10 for each, so I need 20. I've already got two. So I need 16 more. So let's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
And now, if we go up to 10 on these, we should be all set. So we have five of each of those. The reason I'm bringing these, they're the only seeds, or the only fruits that I have access to from this starting civilization that's brewable. So I'm bringing, basically I'm just bringing along brewable things. Uh, I'm also bringing two sets of eagle leather armor, two sets of eagle leather gloves, uh, helms, two copper battle axes, and then all of this is just meat valued at two. The, the whole rest of my Embark profile is meats valued at two. Again, uh, you watched my last couple, you know that I like to have a cook-based economy. So that's what I went with here was more that same cook-based economy, plus a little bit of armor. You know, normally I don't always Embark with this armor, but I thought it might be nice to try it this time and see how things go. So let's go ahead then and configure our people. I like to min-max right from the start. So let's take a look at who we got. We have people who are not very good at anything. Okay, that's fine. Military. Wow. No real winners there either. Hmm. All right. Uh, one of the most important roles that I'm going to need to fill up to start with is a farmer. And I have I have a bit of a different idea of how I'm going to do things here. So just let me just take a look. Who looks like they make a good farmer? We have Kivish would make a decent farmer. In theory, Logem or Logem would as well. Okay, would either of them make a military? Kivish or... I think Logem would make a decent military dwarf. They don't, they don't excel at anything, but they don't suck at anything either. That's kind of an important trait to have. So I think we will make Kivish our farmer. And that will allow us to make Logem one of our two Axe Lords. Let's commit those changes to know they're there. Um, we're also going to need a, just a general crafter who's not going to do carpentry, but a general crafter. Ideally, someone who sucks at mining would be great. Um, let's see. You're no good at masonry. Oh, no, you are. Okay, you're an okay mason. You're an okay stone crafter. Uh, if we keep going up the line, you're an okay leather worker and bone crafter. You're an okay gem cutter. You know, this guy seems to suck at a lot of things, but none of them are the crafting traits we're looking for. So let's make him our, our general crafter to start, which is also going to be our leader. Uh, and then our carpenter is also going to be our architect. See, that's not architect, that's siege engineer. So what about this guy? The reason I'm looking at this guy because he sucks as a miner, which means he probably isn't that strong. Yeah, so make potentially would make a, you know... He, if he sucks at mining, he probably sucks at being a military dwarf as well, is what I'm looking at. Now, he has uh, he's neutral on architect, but so is everybody. And he's also neutral on carpentry. So you're going to be my carpenter. Uh, so now we have two miners and an axe dwarf that we need to make out of these. Let's go with... Strength is pretty easy to build up. Toughness, I don't know if it is. So let's, let's make Fikad here, our other lax lord. And that will leave us with Zan as our um, miner and Udib as our other miner. So if we look, we should have two axe lords, two miners, a farmer, a crafter, and a carpenter. That sounds good to me. Let's hop back over to the game. And carpenter, uh, as I said, is also going to be the architect. So let's give them maximum architect skill. They don't need maximum carpenter skill because they'll level that up pretty quickly. Miner needs no skills. They'll, they'll get their mining skill up pretty quickly. Axe lords, I'm only going to give teacher skill to because frankly, they learn the axe skill pretty quickly as it stands. So teacher and teacher in both of those. The crafter, as I said, is also going to be our leader. So I'm going to give him two pacifier, two consoler. Um, is there anything else I need from the crafter? I don't think there is. I feel like I had thought they needed something. Though. Let's just see. We'll keep going and we might come back to that. Uh, my farmer, I want to be a maxed out grower and a maxed out herbalist right off the bat. And then my miner, nothing. So uh, it turns out I'm not mistaken. I'm at zero points. So yeah, I did want the crafter just to be the leader, the consoler and the pacifier. I think I'm getting a little confused because I had the carpenter doing it. And that's why I had uh, in, in one of the, when I was doing the planning, I think I had the carpenter as the leader as well. But I'm definitely going to make the carpet, the uh, crafter, the leader. So there we go. That's all set up. Let's do the group name first. The released saber. I like it. We're sticking with it. Uh, fort name. 
Decent Works. You know what? Set the bar low. Um, welcome to the Fort of Decent Works. I'm, I'm all over that. We're, we're setting the bar low, so we're, we're going to be the Fortress of Decent Works, which is part of the wet paper, wasn't it? Isn't that the, the civilization we're part of? Oh, that's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. I love it. Um, so everything is set. I think we are ready to go. Yeah, let's hit the E key, embark, and uh, you guys will get the first look at this. I already looked at it because I wanted to make sure there was a, you know, I, I want to make sure it's not pockmarked with um, lakes everywhere. I want to make sure there's enough room for me to kind of dig. This what I looked at was what the lakes were. I didn't look at anything else. Uh, and I also came up with a plan and created uh, two macros, which you will see in a moment. Although now that I'm thinking about it, I don't think my macros make any sense. Because my macro, I just kind of started in a random position. I wasn't too worried about it. But now I think about it, I kind of need to know where it starts. Because I don't know how deep I'm going to be digging down, right? I'm going to go till the first level of stone. Maybe I'll just go this deep anyway, and we'll go from there. So let's start off. I'm going to dig out the military level is going to be the top level. So let's designate that to get done. We'll take a second for the macro to load, and here we go. Why is it so slow? I thought I had set the macros to be faster. Well, I apologize. I had set them to be faster, but I guess they have decided to go back to being slow. I don't know why. Uh, but you can see a staircase in the middle. The W is for wood. That's where wood storage is going to go. Uh, the thing right beside the staircase is going to be where a craft horse workshop will be. The B is for bones. That's where our bone storage is going to go. And uh, then the hospital is going to go on the bottom portion. On the top portion is going to be... Um, no... Okay, S is uh, going to be where a siege workshop goes, and the space right below it is going to be a storage area for uh, trade goods. The middle portion that you can see is left out is going to be where the trade depot goes. Right now, it's building the hospital, uh, and the doctor's living quarters is what's going in their hospital, and doctor's living quarters, as well as a little bit of storage for them. Uh, up here is the jail. It's the jail going in right now. I was hoping this would be quicker, but this is working out fine. It's going at a good speed that I can kind of explain as we go. Okay, down here on either side is both, both of these sides are going to be identical. They're going to have uh, living quarters and uh, armories, as well as a bit of a dining room type area for military personnel. Although I'm just thinking something I didn't consider actually is that my siege dwarves are going to need to be here and I didn't have space for them. I might have to add, but you know what? That's not hard. There's only four siege dwarves plus the one siege engineer. That won't be hard to do. Okay, that thing that it built in the middle is where we're going to put uh, siege weapons. And then it just built two danger rooms. It's now building the the food, so the dining room for the, the military people, and then another set of rooms. Uh, then some storage area for food and drink. Then the first barracks. The second barracks. Then a space. And then the third barracks. Gonna be three barracks on each side. There, you can see that's supposed to be an axe, so that's where the uh, the storage is going to be for my melee squads. This here, you're going to see, is the outline of a bow, so that's going to be storage for my uh, archers. That little box that it that it did right beside the danger rooms, that is going to be a place for Mark dwarfs to train. And then, like I said, it's just going to mirror this on the other side. So it's going to put in some housing, some living quarters for military dwarves. Okay, the last set, and then again a dining area, because the dwarves are basically going to be restricted to the side that they live on even. I'm, I'm going to go all out to with the burrows. I think it's it really worked out well once I started using them, so I want to use them a bit more. So uh, another place storage for uh, archers, and then the, uh, the barracks, the storage room for the melee dwarves which is going to be armor and axes and stuff like that. Uh, and then the hallway, and there you go. That's the next, uh, where the archery targets are going to be. 
And then this is kind of an interesting idea that I came up with. I might use some traps, and if I do use some traps, this is kind of how traps are going to go. And I'll explain it in a moment, because this is almost done. And then of course an entry hallway as you would expect, and then the ramps that lead outside. So yeah, my thinking is that we could like use bridges to kind of block this off, so that when bad guys come in, they'll have to kind of navigate around this way. Which I think would be really cool. I'm having to go around. Uh, and then we can line all these halls with traps. And the reason you need to use bridges or something in here is so that the trade caravans can still get through when they come in. The other thing I'd like to do is try to lure them in more. So like have a have a you know a bridge that comes up here that leaves room for the dogs. Remember that was one of my complaints, there's no room for dogs. Uh, have a door that comes up here so that they can come in chasing people, get trapped behind this door. And then as they come in, we can then, this is going to be two bridges, have these two bridges drop so that now these dwarves are kind of, or sorry, the, the orcs or, or whoever's attacking us is stuck here and uh, potentially stuck in traps. And then our siege weapons, which we're going to have a ballista here, a ballista here, and a ballista here. Uh, are going to be able to shoot down this hallway at them and hopefully so I'm trying to make like a big killing zone here is, is kind of the point uh, I have designated some hollow to go in here whether or not we use it I, I don't know again the the marks dwarves are going to be a very low priority for me given how they didn't seem to, to work that well uh, they'll be like my last military squads that I make but you know potentially we can extend the hallways here put fortifications and give them room to shoot across and into uh, any attackers that are out so that's that's kind of my thinking of how this is going to go so like I said this would be the trade depot you can see the trade caravan would come in put some traps up in here uh, and then some armories The I, I tried to use icons that made sense to me so you know C, S for siege W for wood B for bones F for food I didn't put it here but this was going to be F as well it just wasn't tall enough I didn't, I didn't think to fit it in uh, then there'd be a well here and storage area for buckets, in case you're wondering, that's that's how this works. So there's going to be a well, storage area for buckets. That way there's a well right in the hospital. Uh, each hospital room, I was thinking as well, is is kind of a, bit, uh, a little bit smaller. But I, I was thinking about it, I was like, wait, no, they don't really need all that room. Uh, you might think, well, so then this is the storage for the, the bandages and stuff? No, I'm actually going to put those just like along the hallway here. I'll just put some bins for that. This is going to be where food is going to go. This is going to be where drink is going to go. And that way the doctors can have their own little living area here. So literally doctors can be restricted to this burrow. Right? They'll never have to leave this area. Which is good because it means as soon as a patient gets delivered, doctors should be right on it. Military dwarves, they're going to be restricted kind of to this area. You know, until such time as we need them. So they're, they're, there's their housing. This is where they're going to eat. It is big enough. I made sure. Uh, there's uh, drink and food storage. And then the uh, armories. I tried to make this. This is like how you make armor in Minecraft, you know, like a chest plate. It's kind of the same shape, roughly. <laughs> I know it's not perfectly, but that's kind of the idea that made me think of it. So that's why these are because it's armor, those are armories, which are bar barracks, basically, right? And then the storage for bows uh, or, or anything bow related, right? So bows, ammunition, and uh, leather armor. The axe dwarves is going to be storage for their armor and their axes. And it's all mirrored. Uh, so it should all work out nicely. If we revisit kind of my, my planning in terms of people, you can see that we have 20 axe, 20 hammer, and 10 marks dwarf total the the personal guard is is you know that's like the law dwarf and the hammer and all that they're kind of irrelevant so it was 20 20 uh hammer so we could put like one hammer here oop i hit shift one hammer here and one hammer here there's 20 we could do one hammer here and one hammer here or, uh i'm sorry one axe here and one axe there that's 20 for them and then do like five archers and five archers there's 10 archers that way these rooms don't need to be that big and yet they'll still be able to to kind of shoot um, I was thinking as well, if we can lift up an area back here or have like the bridge collapse instead of closing, uh, or, or sorry, lift to, to form a wall here, then we could even technically, if we wanted to, set up like catapults back here to catapult down here. And then any, any ammo that hits the wall, if it doesn't hit any bad guys, will fall down a level. And then after the siege, we can go collect it all and reuse it. Because if things fall a Z, a Z level, you could pick them up again. So that was kind of my thinking for this top level. I don't know what's going to go in here. I didn't really think that far, but I thought, well, I should put 
I, I could have just connected it and left space because the ballista are going to take up this kind of room. So I thought I could just leave the space, but I'm sorry, they're not. They're going to take up this room. The one goes here, one goes here, and then one goes here. No, one goes here. Yep, so they're middle shoots this way. So that'll be the center of one, the center of another, and the center of the last one. Uh, so I could have just connected them and had extra space, but the thing is you really want to limit where dwarves can walk around here so they don't go stand in front of the ballista when it shoots. So that's kind of what I'm trying to do is limit where dwarves can stand here. Um, so I don't know what's going to go in here. I'll worry about it later. Uh, these little areas here are actually where I'm going to put the levers that control all of my bridges and stuff. Uh, so, because I'm always like, oh, where am I going to put the levers? Well, I'm going to put them right here. Problem solved. And this is going to be ammo storage for my siege weapons. It's kind of my thinking there. This is going to be trade goods storage. It's not a lot, I know, but at the end of the day, the trade goods are all going to be in bins, and I very rarely need that much, so it'll work out fine. And this is where the siege weapons are going to go. I don't haven't really figured this out in depth, but um, I don't think I really need to either, because at the end of the day, you know, it's going to be pretty late in the game when I start working on siege weapons, I think. Uh, but there's the military level. I think, I think it's in good shape. Like I said, the only thing I didn't account for is that I'm going to need uh, room for my... four siege operators and one siege engineer and I didn't put space for them but they should be on this level as well so I might add them in uh, somewhere and they would kind of fit back here Oop. in theory I could do like I could live kind of back here somewhere. I don't know. I'd have to put a hallway in or we can stick them anywhere. But again, they're going to be kind of late game. Even if need be, we can always, of course, just assign them like back here. You know, it's not the end of the world. We can put them anywhere we want to. It's really not. I'm really not going to worry about the siege people too much uh, for now. Now, as I said, the only problem is when I designated this, I kind of started in a random place. So I don't even know if I could. Like, I hope this is the first uh, stone level, because if it's not, I'm going to feel like a bit of an idiot. I hope it's deep enough. Should I give myself extra space, just in case? I don't really have a lot of extra space, though, do I? How many layers did I give myself? One, two, three, four, five, six. That's got to be in the stone. It's got to be in the stone. I'm going to assume it's in the stone. It has to be, right? It has to be. So this is where the entrance is going to be. The initial way in. Again, I'm going to do a little bit of an entryway, I think. Wow, there's not a lot of space, is there? Holy smokes. I didn't realize I was that... Cutting it that tight. Um, how big do I want this to be? I think something like that would probably be nice. I think this needs to go one more, though. Maybe not. We just want to go... You know, I'm going to go even shorter. I'm just going to do it like that. Okay. Now, I do want to start off by clearing out some of these trees around it. So let's just go actually from... 10 from the corner there to 10 from the corner here. Do trees there. And uh, for now, let's say don't mine this out. Actually, you know what the easiest way to do this is, is we're just not going to have anyone with the mining labor enabled. Okay, so that's going to start that. And they're digging down. All right, so that's good there. Uh, over here, I want to... Hmm. Gather some plants. I wouldn't mind getting started on the gathering of the plants. I don't want to be too close to the trees, though. Let's gather the plants right against the edge of the screen. And let's put in a stockpile for plant food. Let's see, where's the middle? The middle's here. 
I don't really want to... Let's do that. That'll be our plant storage for now. Hopefully they don't put plants there or there as these trees fall and branches fall on them. You know, I'm not going to have plant storage for now. I'm going to wait till s some of these trees... Oh, I kind of need plant storage though. Let's just do one strip of plant storage. Let's start off small. We can expand as needed. Uh, this is just for plants. Permit plants. I have nowhere for seeds to go, nothing else. Okay. Uh, I'm going to want to get animals pastured. Let's start off with a animal pasture. I like to get animals set up with a little bit of water. Uh, how about right down here? There's a little bit of water right here. We'll go right from like the corner and across. Pen pasture and everything is going to get penned pastured in this one. Okay. Uh, anything else right off the bat? We are cutting down trees. We need to set up our workshop orders. Uh, they gather wood. I want only farmers to harvest. Uh, I want to... No auto loom. Now, are there any spider webs? I'm not seeing any. I see none. So I'm also going to uh, turn off the auto collection of webs. Okay, now, labors. That's what we have to do before we can unpause the game. Uh, the farmer, I have configured a custom profession, but I'm curious if it's the one that I want. They're doing farming, plant gathering, plant processing, milking, cheese making, butchery, tanning. Milking, cheese making, shearing, and spinning is also I want to be on there. And hauling, I want nothing. Um, so this is update custom profession from this unit. There we go. So if we were to set this guy as a farmer, for example, he should look exactly like that guy. And he does. Perfect. I'm going to uh, clear my changes and set the farmer as farmer. Commit those. All right, so the farmer set up. Axe Lord, one of them is going to be a wood cutter. And that's all he's going to do for now. The other one is going to be a generic hauler to start. I'm just going to turn on these. There we go. A generic hauler to start. So the top two are done. Uh, Carpenter is going to do carpentry and nothing else. Carpentry, architecture, and nothing else. Uh, although, you know what, in the beginning, there's no hauling, there's no um, carpentry to do, so we'll leave his hauling turned on. The crafter, same thing. There's going to be a lot of work for him to do, but uh, for now, we'll leave him just as a generic hauler. I will turn on the crafting we want, which is wood crafting, masonry, stone detailing as well. Sure, I'm just not going to have any assigned stone crafting, yes. Uh, he's also going to do bone carving and leather working, as well as any of these crafting jobs. Now, I'm probably not going to assign anyone to do them, but someone's going to have to. Uh, he will very likely be doing some mechanics work fairly early on as well. Uh, the farmer is all set up. Now the two miners are just going to mine. And of course, for now, we don't want to configure that. So let's commit all those changes. We will head back over to Dwarf Fortress. Um, and I'm just going to double check again. Mining, channeling, carving fortification, carving track. Okay. And I was really curious to see as well, if I want to expose all of this to sunlight so that these guys actually get don't get cave adaptation. Would I be carving through water? I won't. Oh, fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. All right, now, I don't want all of this to get done, so let's start off by just digging... Uh, no, let's dig that. We need them to just dig their way to... Uh, you know what? Well, let's leave this little room getting done. We just need them to dig out their way to a trade depot fairly quickly, get a trade depot up and running. So once they reach this, once we get the mining, they'll mine in, they'll mine up, they'll do that little room, they'll come this way, they'll carve out the trade depot. Oh, and I had left. Yep, I've got to remove all of this stuff. Don't want them getting too deep in there. Yep. And in fact, we can even start off with this being fairly small. Right? The priority really is just to get a trade depot going. Okay. 
Um, so get a trade deep up and running. Very similar to last time. We're gonna be, you know, we're gonna have to do some some cooking and some stuff when we're not quite established for that. So we're gonna be kind of taking over some space to do that kind of thing. But for now, this is I think where we're gonna start. Okay, so I think everything is configured. I think all of our starting is set up. Let me just check. There's no I don't wanna I can't build any buildings. So I didn't bring any wood. I normally do, but I didn't I didn't want to this time. I'm trying something a little different. Let's unpause. There we go. People should rush off. Ho, oh, doggy. All right, things slow down a little bit here to a reasonable level. We're cutting down some trees, we're gathering some plants. And this is straight vanilla, by the way. This is this is the starter pack with DF hack. There's no modest mod, no none of, none of that stuff is in this. Hurry up there, woodcutter. I want you to cut this one. This is the important one. There we go. He's on it. He's doing it. And that last one I'm not worried about. Okay. Miners. You shall now mine. And not haul. Commit. Uh, we can also start building. So let's build a workshop. I want a carpenter's workshop. Uh, and let's set it up kind of near the entrance. Let's put the Carpenter's Workshop like right here. Uh, I'm also going to want a Craft Doors Workshop. We'll put that right next to it. Um, any other workshops that I need right off the bat? Carpenter, Craft Dwarf. I don't think so. I think that's all I need for now. So let's let them get to it. Let's cut down his last tree. Excellent. So then let's go ahead and get him kind of out of the way. Actually, where, where do we want to put a bridge over here? We need a bridge across somewhere. Uh, it looks like there's a bunch of places. Let's, um, yeah, let's focus on cutting down trees near the way in, I guess. I was hoping to clear out a little bit of space there, but I don't think we're going to need it. So why don't you cut down all this stuff? We may end up with some injured animals, but that's... Just the reality of life, I think. Uh, miners are still doing some hauling. Once they finish with that, though, they should start digging. And digging is done. Inappropriate dig square. What? I don't know what's inappropriate about it. Uh, and I am going to want them to kind of do the entrance, so let me just mark that off for now. Jeez, I hope I hit stone. Okay, good. So we are not in the... What happened? Okay, for some reason the window lost focus. We're not in the first stone layer, we're in the second stone layer, but that's okay. I, I can live with that. So this is this is indeed where we're going to be starting up. Okay, perfect. Uh, trees have been cut down, so let me go ahead and remove this food stockpile. And I'm going to replace it with a much bigger one. There we go. And it is going to handle just plants and just seeds. All right, now I'm waiting for my miners to uh, do this initial little bit. And the entrance is almost done. The heck was that noise? Oh, then building a workshop. There's noises for that now. That's cool. All right, so let's go ahead. I'm going to want to remove the uh, up down ramps from these. Yeah, they're just going to come in from the side. That's what I want. And then down there. Good. Now let's just make sure this is going to be big enough for our dogs. One, two, three dogs. And then where the wall is going to go. Perfect. Perfect. I actually made it the right size for once. All right, we're going to need the miners to keep digging all the way in to our trade depot. Yep. That's good. Carry on with that. Do I want to... No, that's all I need. Yep. Um, okay, now we also have this set up. So let's get started. We want... I'm going to want a couple of training axes. I'm also going to want um, some doors. You know, I'm going to use workflow for doors. 
I want to keep, say, five doors and five beds for now. Uh, and let's keep some barrels on hand. Is R not barrel? V is barrel. What's barrel? I don't remember. How can I not remember? I just finished playing this game. V is barrel. Okay. So I want doors, beds, barrels. Do I want to keep some buckets on hand? I probably do. Uh, add bucket uh, and bins. These are all things that I'm going to want to keep spares of. So let's go ahead. Is it not control W? Shift W. What is workflow again? Or is workflow not started? Should be started, isn't it? Shouldn't it? Uh, workflow start or is it on? Workflow enable, that's right. Enable. What the heck is workflow? Do I have to repeat it first? Hmm. Hmm. Add new task equals shift. What is that? Oh, that's page down. That's promote do task now. Oh, I didn't know that was a thing that you could even do. I wonder if that's new. Um, is there a reason I can't use workflow? Uh, work flow. I'm probably not going to find anything in the wiki, am I? Utilities? Uh, okay. DF hack it is. Documentation. How do I get to the documentation again? There's a link on here, I think, somewhere. I, I don't know. I'm just going to go through here. Uh, links. DF hack. Read me. That's what I want. Oh, it opened over here. Right, you guys aren't going to get to see it. it. Sucks to be you. Um, workflow. Oh. Hmm. Apparently there's a separate workflow GUI. Check out the GUI workflow script example below. And then there is no script example. <laughs> nice. Door fortress workflow. I'm sure it's just control W. Uh, press options W. Is that all? Is it alt W then? The only thing I hadn't tried. Alt W, control W, shift W. Windows key W. No. None of that has had any effect, sir. Was there a GUI thing here? Disable option. Okay, what's the options? Workflow list, list command count, amount, unit list, delete all constraints. I don't know why the workflow plugin is not work working. I suspect it's because this water depth key has taken over the control W usage. I think that's probably what's going on. So for now, we have no workflow. Because um, we need to enable it. Let's go init editor. Uh, actually, it's not really the init editor that I want, is it? I need the df hack init file. Uh, where is my saves? Over here. 
Um, friend and homie, be curious how this works. There is a DF hack init file that I want to open in Notepad. Now, control doubled, you toggles water level. I do not want that to be the case. Uh, is workflow in here anywhere? It is, it is indeed. Workflow front end, key binding, add alt W. And it, it does appear to be enabled. So according to this, Alt W, but it looks like it's Alt capital W. Do I have to do Alt Shift W? Is it that ridiculously crazy? Well, Alt Control Shift W, no. Uh, init file, I think you are lying to me. Key binding, add Alt W. Hmm. Uh, Dwarf Fortress workflow not working. Mm. Check out the GUI workflow script below, and then it doesn't. GUI workflow, okay. Are you going to take me to the link? No, you're not. Okay, GUI slash workflow, bind a key. The example can be used Alt W in Q mode. Okay, done that. By pressing L switches the current, that's once you're already in it. So I have to start it somehow? I did say enable. Is there a uh, GUI slash workflow enable that I need to do? Does that make any sense? Don't think so. Workflow enable. Plugin is enabled. Yeah, it already was enabled though. Workflow, let's see it. Okay, so that's semi working. It should be Alt W. Why is Alt W not working? Do I need uh... uh I don't know why workflow is not working. But I really wanted to use workflow for this. Um, how long are we going? We're going 48 minutes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to end the episode here and I'm going to make workflow work. And then on episode two, we'll be back with a working workflow. But we got the general idea of what our military level is going to look like. I've also got to come up with a plan for the farming level, which I have never done yet. I haven't sat down and planned that out. Uh, and then I have planned out the living levels. I can show you that right here. Living space and military level. We have both of those configured. So I'm going to have to figure out exactly where to put the farm level and make a macro for that as well. Also, I don't know why the macro ran slow. I had set them to run quickly, so I'm going to have to change the macro as well so it runs faster. Uh, but we will figure all that out in the next episode. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. It really does help me out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. For now, though, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.